Good day everybody, it's Andrew here and welcome back to my channel. We've got some big updates as a large group of people are going to be getting another batch of stimulus checks starting on January 24th. So let's discuss the details, but before we jump into it, do me a quick favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and share this channel with anyone who you think might find this helpful. This is a community for seniors, and my job here is to be a voice for you and be a voice for seniors to make sure President Biden is keeping his promises to increase Social Security benefits, increase SSI and SSDI, and even approve a next round of stimulus checks specifically for seniors in this stimulus package. So thank you for being a part of our community. On this channel, we give updates specifically on social security benefits, economic news that affects seniors, and just things that generally affect retirement. What's going on in the stock market, what's going on with the next stimulus package, and everything in between. So thank you for being a part of our community, and if you really want to support my work, subscribe to my second channel. The link to that is going to be in the comments of this video, or you could just search on YouTube, The Andrew Paolo Show. So on that channel, we're going to have some updates as well, but it's going to be more of a fun community where I'm going to be on camera playing bingo. You can play bingo with me. We're going to have a live chat. So you could chat with me, chat with the community. We're going to have other games too, like casino games, slot games, announcing lottery winning numbers, things like that. So if you want to really support my work, subscribe to my second channel. The link to that is going to be in the comments here. Or again, you could just search for The Andrew Paolo Show. And thank you to the over 5,000 people who have already subscribed. So with that said, folks, let's jump right into today's update. We're going to do a quick update on daily trending news. Then we're going to talk about who qualifies for this next batch of stimulus payments and what exactly this means for seniors, specifically how this might affect our chances of getting a specific stimulus check for seniors in this stimulus package. Remember, Bernie Sanders is fighting to do a $1,000 stimulus check specifically for seniors in the Build Back Better stimulus package. Now, in trending news is the fact that the CDC just shortened their isolation time for people who test positive for the illness. Now, this is a little complicated, so let's jump into it. Basically, they're lowering the quarantine time from 10 days to five days if you test positive, but you're still expected to wear a mask for the next five days. Now, the really complicated situation here is if you were exposed to someone who tests positive, do you isolate for five days? Do you isolate at all? Or do you isolate for 10 days? Well, the previous rule was to isolate for 10 days. Now, the new rule says you don't have to isolate at all if you were vaccinated in the last six months. So if you were vaccinated in the previous six months, you don't have to isolate at all as long as you yourself don't have symptoms. Now, if it's been more than six months or you haven't been boosted, then you're expected to isolate for five days and then still wear a mask for an additional five days, kind of bringing that to a total of 10 days, but only actually quarantining for five of those if that kind of makes sense. But basically, they're lowering kind of how strict they're making these quarantine rules. So let me know in the comments, guys. Do you agree with that? It's a little interesting with uh, things getting worse with this new variant, the fact that they're kind of making the rules less strict. But at the same time, people are trying to get back to normal. And of course, hospitalizations are not as bad as they were just a year ago. So let me know your thoughts on that. That is the new CDC recommendation. Now, also trending in the news is the fact that this war between former President Trump and Mitch McConnell continues to get worse. And now a new poll just came out showing that 52% of Republican voters disapprove of Mitch McConnell as President Trump, former President Trump, ramps up his pressure to topple him from the Senate. Now, this has been going on for basically since Trump became president. Their relationship was never really that good. And obviously, we all know what happened in January, right? That whole situation. And Mitch McConnell basically denounced President Trump at the time. And ever since then, former President Trump has been going really hard campaigning against Mitch McConnell. He wants to get him out of the Senate completely, but especially at least get him out from being the Senate minority leader or majority leader, depending on who's in charge of the Senate, right? He basically doesn't want Mitch McConnell to be at the Republican helm of the Senate, especially if he ends up going back in office in 2024. Now, this is interesting because Mitch McConnell has a long history of getting deals done with Republicans, but blocking Democrats from getting anything done. So it's kind of interesting to think if Mitch McConnell wasn't in place, who would take his place? And would that person 
block Democrats just as much as Mitch McConnell. So this situation continues to develop. We'll have to wait and see. But either way, Mitch McConnell won't be up for re-election for another two and a half years, right? So he's going to be in place for at least a couple of years. But as early as at the end of next year, he could lose his role as the Senate minority leader or majority leader, depending if whether or not Republicans take control of the Senate. Now, as far as the stimulus checks coming out on January 24th, this has everything to do with tax season. Now, if you look on your screen, January 24th starts the starting dates for the tax season to file your taxes for 2021. Now, full disclosure here, this might actually be delayed. The IRS is considering pushing that back to January 31st, but most likely it's going to begin on January 24th. Now, this matters because when you file your taxes, there's going to be millions of people who qualify for a back paid stimulus payment. Now, to be honest with you here, folks, most seniors are not going to qualify for these payments, but this is still good news for seniors going forward, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Now, this has to do with getting a back paid stimulus payment for the third stimulus checks which came out in March for those people who had kids in 2021. Now remember you got a third stimulus check, every adult got a $1400 check and every child got a $1400 check as well or really the parent got the check for that child and that was a $1400 stimulus check as well. Now if you had a child born in 2021 and you still were not able to report that for that monthly child tax credit, you're going to get a back paid $1400 stimulus check. Of course, you would have to qualify based off the income requirements, but you would also get the monthly stimulus payments. Remember, people with kids under 6 years old were getting $300 per month for 6 months. So that adds up to $1800 per month for the monthly stimulus checks that would be paid in back pay on top of the $1,400 stimulus check, which was the third check, that adds up to $3,200 in a back paid stimulus payment. So if someone had a child this year in 2021, they weren't able to sign up for the monthly stimulus payments, they're going to get somewhere around $3,200 in a lump sum back paid stimulus payment. So I know what you're thinking, right? If you're a senior, you watch my channel, most people watch my who watch my channel are seniors. This, of course, is a community for seniors, and this probably won't directly help you, but it's gonna indirectly help you in a couple of ways. First, if you have friends or family, let them know about these programs. Let them know, hey, if you had a kid this year, I know a lot of people who have had kids this year, let them know that you can qualify for these back paid stimulus payments. So help your friends and family, let them know this information exists, and this could help them a lot, especially because we are still in the middle of a pandemic. Secondly, when we're seeing parents getting lump sums of two, three, four thousand dollars in stimulus payments, this motivates Bernie Sanders even more to try and fight to get a specific stimulus check for seniors in this next stimulus package as well. This is something that Bernie Sanders has said multiple times. With the monthly stimulus payments for families going out, He's saying, why are families getting $300 per month per child? A lot of families are getting over $1,000 per month if they have three or four kids. And he has said multiple times on the record, we need to end childhood poverty and senior poverty, right? So as we're getting these monthly checks for families and we're getting these lump sum stimulus checks for families for tax season, he keeps saying that we're doing a good job ending childhood poverty. Of course, they've cut that in half since these childhood since these child payments have been going out, but now we need to focus on ending senior poverty, right? This is something Bernie Sanders has said over and over again. So he continues to fight and say, with parents getting these lump sum payments, that's great. We need to do the same for seniors. This is something he continues to fight for. And if anything, seeing parents getting these lump sums is only gonna motivate him even more and really create a situation where if we have seniors who have paid taxes their entire lives, I have people in the comments who have said, who say, Andrew, I've paid taxes for 30, 40, 50 years. Then we have parents getting stimulus checks, and that's great, getting monthly stimulus payments for kids, but they haven't really been paying taxes their whole life like seniors have, right? Seniors have paid taxes for 30, 40, 50 years. Then they get a tiny social security benefit of $1,000 per month. So it only makes sense if we can help families we should be able to help seniors as well. And guys, let me know in the comments if you agree. So with Congress currently on vacation, they're gonna be back on January 3rd, and Chuck Schumer has vowed to bring the stimulus package to a vote. 
So we should have a lot of updates in the next couple of weeks. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will keep you posted as things develop on the next stimulus package, the potential for a specific stimulus check for seniors, and social security changes as well. Now, one program that's been stimulating the economy and really hasn't been talked about as a stimulus check, but really is a form of stimulus, is the student loan freeze. Now, personally, I do have student loans, and I know a lot of seniors who watch my channel still have student loan debt as well. And with the student loan payments having been frozen for the last two years, this has actually gone a long way in helping the American people directly as well as stimulate the economy. When you think about it, most, the average student loan payment, I believe, is $350 per month. That's basically a stimulus payment you're getting every single month because you don't have to pay your payment. Of course, it's not like forgiveness. You're going to have to pay it eventually, but in the short term, it almost works as kind of a short-term stimulus plan, right? We have millions of borrowers with an extra $300, $500 per month that they could use to pay their bills, put food on the tables, put in savings, stimulate the economy by buying things. So this really has been stimulating the economy. And it's been in the news that President Biden just extended that freeze once again through May. So he extended it for an additional 90 days. And there's been a lot of talks as to whether or not this is a signal that they actually are considering doing some form of student loan forgiveness. Remember, President Biden promised to do at least a $10,000 forgiveness. He promised on the campaign trail to do a $10,000 student loan forgiveness for every single borrower. That's something he promised, right? So if he doesn't do it, he's essentially just another politician breaking another promise. Then we have more liberals like AOC pushing him to do a $50,000 student loan forgiveness. And now with the news that he actually extended this, kind of uh, the hope that's going to happen has been reawoken, right? It's like for a while they were like, no, it's not going to happen. President Biden himself said he wants Congress to do it. And of course, we know Republicans won't vote for that. Um, but then with the fact now that he's actually extended it to May, it's kind of opened the door once again. People are wondering, is he actually going to cancel some student debt? So let me know in the comments, guys. Do you support the idea of canceling student debt, even if it's just $10,000? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's unfair? Some people say it's unfair. Some people say, you know what, we shouldn't be kind of an indentured servitude. And it's a really interesting idea because not only would it help people directly, but it actually would stimulate the economy as well because of everything I just said, right? People have more money left over at the end of the month. They have more money to spend, and it therefore stimulates the economy. So with that said, this clip, I'm going to end this video with this clip. It does a really good job of kind of showing both sides of the argument. Should we cancel student debt to stimulate the economy? Or is it really unfair to have some people's student loans forgiven when other people have already paid their student debt over the last 20 years or whatever it may be. So if you'd like to stick around for this clip, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And again, don't forget to subscribe. We're going to have a lot of updates on the next stimulus package as well. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Folks, our economic recovery is the strongest in the world. But I know that because of the pandemic, many borrowers need more time to resume payments. For that reason, my administration is extending the pause on student loans repayments for 90 more days through May 1, 2022. Some progressives are taking the extension as evidence that public pressure on Biden is an effective tactic to get what they want. Meanwhile, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez publicly encouraged Biden to consider going a step further, tweeting, thank you, next step, cancellation. Here to weigh in on the freeze and, what's to, and what, what to expect next is Team Rising. Colin Rogero is a Democratic strategist. Rena Shah is a former Republican strategist and advisor at the Renew Democracy Initiative. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, Colin, what are, what, what are candidates who are running in close districts? Because you, you know, I, I, know I know you work with a, a lot of them, uh, either in Senate races or House races. What do, what do they feel about the kind of political implications of, re, of, re, of either canceling student debt or reinstituting payments? <clears throat> Well, I mean, let's talk about what's actually been on the table, and that is the, the um, reinstituting of payments. I don't think there's a Democratic candidate or a uh, current incumbent member of Congress or the Senate that's particularly happy with that announcement. First of all, they announced it in December as we're going into holidays that, hey, you're going to have a bunch of big bills come due in January. I think it was just a strategic error. I don't know why we're not actually 
seriously considering canceling student debt because we've got a generation of people who are basically saddled with indentured servitude. And we need to just get rid of it. If you want to actually spur the economy, give the younger generations, including myself, I just finished paying them, uh, you, you know, the chance to actually engage in the economy in a new way without having to worry about this burdensome debt that exists for 41 million people in the, in the country. I think it was a strategic error and I think it was a communication error, and I think we should just be actually pursuing cancellation. But Colin, if you just finished paying them, why can't we ask that of other people who willingly took on debt, who made a ple who borrowed money with the, in order to get an experience and a college degree and, and to eventually agree to pay it back? Like, this wasn't forced on anyone. Everyone in debt agreed to do that. This isn't like, even and this isn't akin to medical debt or something else where it's some unforeseen sure, circumstance sure that falls in. These are people who agreed to do this, and now they're saying, oh, well, I got all the benefit of it, but I'm not going to pay it back. You paid it back. Wouldn't you be a little, wouldn't you feel it was unfair if everybody else got it, or everyone in this one time frame gets the cancellation, then no one before that and no one after? Yeah, a absolutely, Rob, Robbie. That is a, an incredibly privileged point of view and spoken from someone who actually probably had, didn't have to deal with great uh, amounts of debt. I did and I had a scholarship. So what I think is that America is in a competition with the entire world. OK, and if our students and our young people and even young adults or adults like myself are still struggling with paying student debt while the rest of the world doesn't worry about that. And they have the ability to be innovative and not worry about health care and not worry about other expenses associated with large amounts of massive debt. We're putting ourselves at a strategic disadvantage. Why would we put the United States at a strategic disadvantage? It's not about whether or not I pay back my loans and somebody else doesn't have to pay back the entirety of theirs. It's about what is good for America and the American economy and the people who live here. So I'm not going to be mad because somebody didn't have to pay back their debt. I'm going to be happy that America is now more competitive with the world, period. And, and Rena, what about that? You know, out of, out of spite, are we making ourselves less competitive just so that we well, can I, feel good about having, you know, forcing these kids to pay their loans back? I, I have a number of thoughts on why America is not as competitive or innovative as, as it should be from its student population, for example. I talk about this lack of financial literacy all the time in my generation where we just we were not at all schooled or educated in any way by any force, whether it's private or public, about what it means to take on a massive amount of debt for your everyday life. So one thing I've seen happen in later millennials is just to live with it. And frankly, the repercussions of living with it seem less and less all the time. So I don't want to diminish those who are really advocating for full on cancellation. I am, you know, I'm, I come from somebody who was extremely privileged and got a gift of no student loan debt. I want to be very open and honest about that because it is tough for people like my husband, for example, who went on and got a terminal degree, got an MD and lives with debt to this day at the age of 40. So now we as a couple, I took that on when I married him seven years ago. Uh, this is this is a reality for Americans everywhere that you've got to think about your loans in some way, shape or form. And it does complicate people's lives. It does complicate their ability to go out there and do more for themselves, which I always talk about when I come here is moving that station in life. Uh, it's no joke that Americans collectively have 1.7 trillion, not million, billion, trillion in student loan debt. And I think it's absurd. So I think we need a real conversation about American higher education. Uh, we used to say in the early days of this COVID pandemic, we'll do it after this pandemic washes over. Here we are entering year three. We know that people, thanks to President Biden, won't have to deal with this until May. But do people even know how to start rep when repayments begin? Do they even know how to properly do that? My, my answer to that is I don't think so. But I also don't know that canceling it all outright is a good answer. We know that public opinion is in one place. We know that over 50 percent of voters do support it with rep Republicans, uh, you know, not wanting it so much and older voters not wanting it so much. Older voters, you know, are saying, hey, hey why cancel? I had to deal with this. But in general, I just think we've, we've lacked the entire conversation here. We've been really lacking as a society and on talking about how how we talk about our finances responsibility, how we move forward on paying loans back responsibly, and even taking on things such as home mortgages and dealing with credit card uh, payments. I mean, this is just something to me, the average American does not have to deal with. I had a gift and I still felt very, very lost yeah. when I came out of a four-year college. So I just, you know, this is this is a tough conversation to have because I understand the plight of lower income Americans, but at the same time, I'm also thinking, where are we gonna get people back on track? And I don't know that cancellation's the answer. I don't think so entirely, but I like the yeah. pause.